What is going on YouTube? Just helping you out here. And for today's video, I will be doing Chapter 2, Problem 11 in the Quantitative Chemical Analysis, 9th Edition Textbook by Daniel C. Harris. Chapter 2 is all about tools of the trade, and Problem 11 wants us to find the apparent mass of cesium chloride that we would need to mass on a balance in order to have a true mass that we are given. So basically this question is asking about buoyancy correction and the equation for buoyancy correction is your true mass ignore that M your true mass is equal to your apparent mass or the mass that would be read on the balance times this huge fraction which is 1 minus the density of air this P symbol is a row, a Greek letter row which uh, stands for density over rho standard, so some standard density over 1 minus density of air over the density of your unknown or the density of your chemical in this case the density of cesium chloride and we need to find the apparent mass which is this value here so we could multiply both sides by this denominator and then divide both sides by this numerator to solve for the apparent mass so then the apparent mass is going to equal the true mass times 1 minus density of air over the density of your unknown over 1 minus density of air over density standard. And we have all these values in the problem, and some of them are universal constants, so we can plug all of those in and say our true mass is 1.267 grams, and the density of air is 0 0.0012 grams per milliliter. The density of our unknown we are given in the problem, which is 3.988 grams per milliliter over 1 minus the density of air, which is the same as above, over standard density which is a universal constant 8.0 grams per milliliter and when you plug all of that into your calculator you will get 1.267 grams keeping the same amount of sig figs as we're given in the problem with this mass this mass these two masses will be the same this one really comes out to like 1.2668 or something like that but rounding to the amount of sig figs that the original mass we're given in the problem is they will be the same value. This suggests that um, buoyancy in this situation is basically negligible. It won't affect any further calculation significantly. So we can say buoyancy is negligible. So that's it for this problem. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like, leave a comment if you have a question about something I did or an idea for a future video, and lastly, please don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about my channel so I can grow and help more of you guys out. I'm just helping you out. See you in the next video.